Well, I'm sure anybody that's seen my past videos has seen this, my old A-liner trailer. I've gone through thousands of miles all through the US and Canada with it. And you also know that I've made a lot of changes to it. I've done some mods, repairs, tweaks, or just little ideas that I thought would help the camping experience. And I did release videos on them, but the problem is I've never been able to update. So this video is about updates, not on all 70 or so changes, but on at least a few that I think were important. So I hope you get something out of this and it gives you an idea to give you some new updates as well. The first one up is the shower curtain rod from my first 10 low cost ideas for an A-liner video. I hung it with brackets near the peak of the roof. Here, slide this out, goes to the other side in the bracket, a little bit of a twist, and it's in place. Well, the same curtain extension rod is still there. One thing I did change though, instead of keeping it to extend back and forth, I made it rigid by putting two rivets in the middle. That way it also acts as a good brace against the sides if you ever have issues with wind or whatever. So you still hang things from it, it works great to dry towels. The only other change is how I store it. Because there's actually a little bit more room at the base of the roof than there is at the top, the curtain rod actually fits perfectly in this little space here. But to hold it in place, I took two broom clips, one on this side and one on that side, same ones I used in my shower, and that way I can put it in like that and just go click, click, and that holds it in place. And also, the broom clips also hold the carpet in place that I've got in the ends. And while we're at it, remember this, the lampshade, just made out of cardboard and uh, cloth tape and Velcro. It still works. In part three of my repairs video, I showed the issues I had with rocks in the front of my trailer. My solution was to cover the front with rubber runner using contact cement. I then spray painted the runner to blend in as well as reduce the heat on it. Well, as you can see, after a year and uh, maybe four months of a lot of heat, a lot of rocks, a lot of exposure and a lot of driving, the rubber has done absolutely fantastic. There are a few marks and cracks in one edge, but they don't seem to compromise the purpose. The rubber has not separated from the sides at all. So the contact cement really worked well. It takes the heat. Um, I did paint the silver above, which reduces the temperature a little bit. Uh, I left the black below. I mean, it does pick up dirt and slush and everything else, but you can clean it off with a hose. It's worked really, really well. So now let's talk about rust. On the same repair video, I was trying to find a solution for all the rust that had accumulated on my frame. I had purchased a rust preventative and I also coated the frame with a tough enamel. Although I thought I was pretty diligent in trying to prevent it as well as to prevent rock chips, it just didn't happen. As you can see, there's plenty of rock chips. Uh, the enamel just didn't hold up. Probably with two or three coats it might have and properly dried, but uh, I mean, to be fair, I probably didn't give it a, enough time to dry before I first used it, but now that it's been well over a year, um, it still chips. And where the battery used to be, there is rust. It seems I might have missed some uh, corrosion prevention there when I coated it, so uh, that didn't work. So although it did help a bit, I'm not fully satisfied, so chances are I'm going to be looking for more options to prevent rust and to get a good hard coating on the tongue of my trailer. One of the first videos I made was adding space to an A-liner and it included the pop-up desk. Well, guess what? It's still here.
and it still pops up. Well, as you can see, I still have the Road Atlas on it, and that really comes in handy. But I did change some things. First of all, when I originally did this, I covered it in mylar, and I used thumbtacks around the edges. What well, really didn't work? Because the thumbtacks would jiggle off, and then they'd be on the carpet, which is even worse. And the mylar started cracking all over the place. So what I ended up doing is I replaced uh, the mylar with plexiglass, thin plexiglass. So I've got plexiglass on the back, and it's fastened in with wood screws. But on the surface here, I've got thin plexiglass, and instead of using screws, what I did is that I bought clear edging. You know, the kind of edging you get for the walls in your house so they don't get scuffed. And I just put it around there, and then I cut little spots in the edges so that I could curve it around, curved it around here, and then I just stapled it into place on the outside. And that's worked really well. And I can still use this to plan my route because I've got the dry erase markers so that I can put where I'm going, and if I want to change my route, it just comes right off. So it's been handy. It's one of the first things I've done and one of the things I'm most proud of. Well, you probably remember these, the two computer fans I put in my vents. Still going strong with only one update. The fan above the stove was getting really dirty, so I hung it down to inspect. I noticed the label was peeling and wondering if moisture might be a problem. What I did was remove the label to add some waterproofing to where the electrical contacts were. I used Gardner Bender's liquid electrical tape for this. The process was simple. After cleaning the area around the contacts, I applied a layer on each of the four contact points. I did this several times to build up a good thickness. I then glued the label back on and applied more coating with the label in place. I don't expect the fan is completely waterproof, but it should help if your vents are left open in a bad rainstorm. But the fans have performed perfectly and have never let me down. Remember that useless door latch I despise so much in part two of my low cost ideas video? I replaced it with a better latch that has never let me down. But I did change one thing. I added a couple of magnets to hold it in place when not in use. That prevents the latch from marring the door when the trailer is down. Also in part two, I used command strips to hold a mirror in place and three command strip pegs to hold photos and receipts to the wall. With posters, however, I decided to experiment. Well, here's something I didn't know. You can actually use a glue gun on 12 volt. You just need one of those 75 watt inverters, which are like 15 bucks, plug it in, and uh, they don't have as many amps as I thought they would. Works great. So what I'm doing is I'm plastering my walls with stuff. And the next one I'm putting up is that scroll that I got at Slab City that just showed up in my chair one morning. The idea was that glue sticks were a lot cheaper than command strips, and a viewer even recommended a glue gun, so I thought I'd give it a try. Well, there it is. It's kind of a work in progress, if you know what I mean. Well, if you look in the background, you see something's missing, and that's the posters. They simply fell off, just like this one, and this one's ready to go as well. The reason being is a hot glue gun does not secure posters on an A-liner or any kind of trailer because when it gets hot in the trailer, they soften and also when the expansion and contraction of the roof happens, it pulls them. In any case, things fall off. So glue gun, no. What does work, it seems, are command strips again. I have reattached this poster with command strips. I've used command strips on the clips on the sides, on the mirror, on uh, the extension for the light, and they've been up there for a year, two years. So I think the only answer is command strips. 
Well, another modification people inquire about is when I put those vinyl bearings on the side of the roof. That was part four of my A-liner repair videos. To stop the trailer roof from rubbing the sides, I inserted nylon bearings between the two surfaces. I drilled holes and inserted them, and it appeared to solve the issue. Let me put the roof down, and I'll show you how well they've done. So you see they're all still in place, still moving freely, although they are getting a little rough. And I've been lubricating them with Vaseline, but uh, and as you can tell by my finger, the oxides from the aluminum do get in there. But what I did when I bought these, I did buy an extra set. So if one of these fails, I just pop it out with the screwdriver, put the new one in, put a little bit of silicone around it, and I'm good to go. But after, I think about a year and four months, and a lot of lifts up and down, and a lot of uh, driving, they're actually doing good. And none of this wear here is new wear. That's the same wear as the, when I first initiated the, uh, the fix. So as far as preventing wear from the side, it's worked well, and they're still going strong. One that had some concern was when I put a toggle latch on the side to secure the two halves of the roof above the door when traveling. It's definitely drawing the two pieces together. So here's my update. Another modification I made that's had a lot of comments was adding the latch to the side of the A-liner to bring the top part together to prevent further bending of the frame below. Now. All I can say is there has not been an increase in bending, so it's not got worse. And I have not discovered any ill effects of putting this latch here. Some predicted that I was going to rip the hinges off. Well, no, the hinges are fine, and I've certainly done enough road testing on this. It seems to work fine. Um, I don't have any other issues with it, and so I'm going to continue using it. Well, it wasn't that long ago since I included the pine knobs and the door latch, but I've already got an improvement because the door latch does work most of the time, but on really rough roads, it'll jiggle itself back to its original position and the door can open. So what I have done to correct that is I've put two little rubber knobs or little rubber stoppers. So when it comes into this place, it can't go that way or that way and it stays in place. So the last update is one of my favorites, and that's the update to the video making crab apple wine. Now, when I did that video last fall, I couldn't show you the wine because I was still fermenting it. But after a few months, here it is. Here we go. Bon Appetit. Uh, my best year ever. To a really good year. Well, I hope you found my ideas useful. And as you can see, they do evolve over time. Now I included a few updates, but if there's something I did in the past and you'd like to get an update on, Please send me a comment and I'll see if I can fit it into another video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and always watch my other ones. Happy camping and always go where the road takes you. Thumbs up always appreciated and please subscribe.